Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name's Mike Jimenez, and this is the Acquired Taste. We're live on Facebook, live on Twitter, and also on YouTube. Again, on YouTube, you can leave your comments. We'll be able to read them in real time so you can be part of the show. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. I'm going to have a fantastic day and a fantastic show because it is Tuesdays with Teague. Carolina Teague will join us in 15 minutes to give her thoughts on sports, pop culture, nostalgia. We have a lot to get into today. I'm excited about this because Carolina Teague and I used to do shows together at San Antonio Sports Star on Tuesday afternoons, and they were fire. A lot of people would react to the comments because we're both from San Antonio. We like to go back and forth. She is my little sister in this industry when it comes to things. Love her like crazy, and she's going to be on the show in about 15 minutes. I'm a big fan of Carolina Teague. Again, she'll be on in about 15 minutes. Joe Garcia producing today's show. Joe? How's your Tuesday going, my man? Man, my Tuesday is going fantastic. And you know what? I was just telling you, you deserve a victory lap today because we were watching. I was watching yeah. the LSU game, man. It was a who would have thought that they would have bounced back after that ass whooping that was game two? I thought so. Exactly. And I you said did. it yesterday. <laughs> I said it yesterday. Okay. First of all, I need to take a victory lap. Okay. Just two minutes. Give me two minutes of this. I know one gives two craps about this. But the LSU Tigers did win the College World Series in baseball yesterday, beating the living crap out of Florida just 24 hours after Florida thumped the Tigers 24-4 to in the most lopsided game in College World Series history, the most lopsided victory, the most runs ever scored in a game, 24, and everyone's making fun of me. Because yeah. they know I cheer for LSU. My daughter goes to the school, right? My money, my daughter, go to LSU. My daughter is in her final semester over there beginning in August. Now, the thing about it is this. Even Joe Reinagle, good friend of mine that I've known for a long time, <laughs> was giving me so much crap because I posted after the Tigers won 4-3 in game one. It was a best of three series. After the Tigers won game one, Reinagle was giving me so much crap. And I was, he was like, dude, you, your team lost by three touchdowns, and it's a baseball game. And what did I do yesterday? I reacted with, where are you at now? Where are those funny comments now? Yeah. And what did I say in yesterday's show on the Acquired Taste? I said Florida blew its wad. Because, again, if you're going to score 24 runs, what are the odds that you're going to put up a lot of numbers the next game? Everything reverts back to the mean. That's just how life works. And everything that LSU did yesterday was going in their favor. Whenever Florida would get a very good hit, like just a rocket off the aluminum bat, went straight to an LSU player each and every time. LSU was getting singles and doubles and triples and homers. It was a great game. Congratulations to the LSU Tigers. And I liked what they were doing. Pointing to the ring finger. Just like just like the women's basketball team. Yeah. And my daughter's all excited because, you know, they win titles. They win national titles. They yeah. did it in women's ba basketball. They did it in baseball. And those are big-time sports. They were in the SEC championship in football. It is good to be an LSU Tiger fan when it comes to sports. And I know a lot of Longhorn fans out there are like, dude, well, you know, University of Texas gets all these national championships. No one gives a crap about golf, man. No one gives a <laughs> crap about the swimming team or the track team. No one gives two flying craps about it, okay? What matters is what? Anything related to football, basketball, baseball, and that is it. I don't care about lacrosse and John Johns Hopkins lacrosse team. It is baseball, basketball, football. That's what college sports is about. Everything else is kind of just trivial. It really is. Again, you can leave your comment over here on YouTube. Lots of them coming in. Christopher Leha is saying, those Tigers said suck it. That's exactly what they did. Oh, my goodness, man. It is so much fun to cheer for. And I, it, It's a reason to cheer for a team. Did I cheer for LSU three years ago? No. But my daughter and my money go there, and because of that, I have a vested interest in cheering. Even our good friend John Dyer, who gives me a lot of crap on social media, was like, dude, your daughter goes there. You are allowed to cheer for them. You have cut checks <laughs> to Louisiana State University, but congratulations to the Tigers. By the way, uh, they have two players that might go in the top five in the upcoming baseball draft. Uh, which is fantastic. But they got an amazing team. They do. They do, man. And LSU thumped them. It was like, what, 15 to 4, I believe? 18 to 4. 18 to 4. Okay, I turned yeah, it Don't off. forget the last two innings. They were just dropping bombs. Yeah, okay. So it was 15-4, and I changed the channel because yeah. it was already the eighth inning. 
and I went back to kind of like watch the last, you know, couple of outs. So yeah, yeah you're right. It was 18 to four. Think about that. They lost 24 to four. Come back the next day to win 18, 18. to four. Yeah. Uh, but congratulations to LSU. Uh, fantastic. Uh, my daughter and I were on the phone, and we were. It was the fourth inning, fifth inning, and I was thinking to myself, I know LSU is up eight to two, right? But this is a team that put up 24 runs against you just 24 hours ago. I'm not going to start celebrating early. I'm not going to put up one of those tweets that I'm going to regret instantaneously <laughs> or regret two hours later. They're going to tell you it. This aged well. This aged well. Yes, <laughs> it didn't age well. Uh, but as the game was going along, I was like, oh, my God, everything was going the Tigers way. But congratulations to LSU baseball and to Tiger Nation out there. And can we give a Go shout Tigers. out to, to Paul Skinnis? Yes, Man, that mustache, bro. Dude, okay, first of all, my daughter is a senior at LSU, right? She looks like a young girl because she is a young girl. She's going to turn 20 this yeah. weekend. We got to show the mustache. Man. My my goodness, these players on the LSU team look like lumberjacks. They've got full beards going on. They've got these handlebar mustaches, and it is ridiculous how they look. They all look like they're 30, 35 years old. They have one guy on the team who was just jacking bombs out there who looks like he's playing men's league softball. Like he belongs at Kennedy Park going over there. He looks 35, and he's like 22, 21. Hoping... Looks like he drove his family there, man. <laughs> exactly. <Come on. laughs> it looks like he has a 401K. It looks like he's on his third house. He's already had his starter home. And he's going off over there and and just looking all old. But all the players, I guess that that whole um, that whole thing about having the the facial hair. I know that hockey does it. Uh, I know that in the NFL they do it too. Uh, maybe I'm just jealous because if you gave me the opportunity to grow out facial hair, I will let you know I can't do it. Yeah. I mean, I get stubble in the bottom and it'll come out, but it comes out all patchy. It's because you're puro. That's what happens when you're Mexicano, dude. Dude, I got to tell you something real fast. <laughs> I got to tell you something real fast. I referee high school basketball, and they're already calling me. I haven't officiated in about two and a half years. They're calling me for this upcoming season. And it's funny because there was one time I was doing a game. I was doing a game over in Lakey, kind of like where a Concan, kind of like where Garner State Park is. Whatever school is out there, they trotted out there, these this freshman basketball team, where these kids were predominantly white, and they all looked super young. They, they were all 14 years old, 13, 14, 15 years old. But they looked 13, 14, 15 years old. They played a team, a freshman basketball team. I want to say it was from Pearsall. And the Pearsall kids all looked 30. They all had facial hair. And I remember the parents coming up to me. You're not supposed to talk to parents, but the parents came up to me and were like, are these kids 15, 14 freshmen in high school? They drove themselves there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. They, they all drove their way over there. And it's so funny how we all look different, you know, how we all age differently. Uh, but, my, it, it's funny. It's funny. But, yeah, I was like, nope, they're 14 or 15. Uh, just the kids from Pearsall, the kids from South Texas, they grow differently than they do uh, out there in Concan. Again, we're live on Facebook, live on YouTube, live on Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We are so close to subscription number 400. We started just over two weeks ago. Yeah. We're at 390. Share the stream. Let people know what we're doing. And again, if you are a business owner would like to sponsor this show, reach out to us. Just DM me, and we'll give you all the contact information. It's been fantastic so far. Yeah. Two sponsors so far. We need to get to about four sponsors so that we can pick up the second hour. That's kind of how that works. The Drew Show reaches out and says, I'm Hispanic. All my people can grow beards. Then I must not be fully Hispanic, man. I mean, what can I say, dude? You've uh, got some indigenous blood in you, brother. It comes out patchy, <laughs> man. Mike Taylor was on here last week saying that he's part Neanderthal. Oh, no, he's got he's got more Neanderthal in him than the normal person. Yeah, yeah uh, right. maybe that's me, too. Maybe, I'm, maybe I have a little bit more Neanderthal than anything yeah. else because it doesn't come out. Now, here's the weird thing. I'm 46 years old. The top of my head, I have a full head of hair. Look at this. I'm going to show everybody my hair right now. Dude, I have to get this thinned out at least once a month. I get a haircut every 12 days, and at least once a month, I tell them to thin it because I look like a Chia pet if I don't do it. And my hair gets all curly, 
and yeah. I cannot stand the way that I look with curly hair. Yeah. Now and we got Carolina Teague on standby. By okay, way. cool. She's ready. So, you know, you have hair all over your body, right? But for some reason, the only place where I have gray hair is my chin. And when the hair comes out on my chin, it is salt and pepper. Everything else, the, the head of my hair, right? You know, the top of my head. Perfect. There's very little gray or silver. I can maybe count them in one hand. But for some reason, the stubble comes out a little bit weird. Uh, Joker reaches out and says, love the Garner State Park mention. A lot of great memories of growing up there when I was in high school. Dude, I almost died at Garner State Park as a teenager, <laughs> man. I almost fell off a cliff. Um, let's see here. Christopher says, that's a lie, Joe. I'm Mexicano, and I got that beard. Strong, Strong as F. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, again, you can leave your comments here. And the great thing about this show, by the way, and I mentioned this yesterday. I'm trying to drive home the point. Beyond the fact that it's local talk radio, beyond the fact that it's during a time frame where the two sports stations in town, Ticket 760 and San Antonio Sports Star, do not have any local programming, this is not a dated show. So when we talk about things, you can listen to the show at 6 p.m., 8 p.m., 2 p.m., midnight, whatever, and still enjoy the show because it's not dated, right? That's the big thing that we're trying to push around here, that if you're listening, listening to us live right now or in the future, it's going to be enjoyable either way. Carolina Teague will be with us in a moment. Uh, real fast, don't forget to uh, subscribe to Locked On Spurs podcast. Jeff Garcia, Jeff G. Spurs out on Twitter provides daily content when it comes to the silver and black when it comes to your san antonio spurs uh he posted a, sto a story earlier today or actually it was yesterday talking about how there's a big rush for people trying to buy victor Wembanyama rookie basketball cards oh yeah going for a million dollars on ebay i saw that that's crazy and on top of that on top of that san antonio spurs announced the four preseason oh, games man. and those tickets are flying off the shelf. In fact, you were telling me that one of those games is already sold out. First one. Yeah. And it's a preseason game. Yeah. Dude, we're going to have to take out loans to watch the Spurs this year unless we have – unless we have uh, – Look, I'll show it to you on screen yeah, as well. Unless we have season tickets. So what I think people should do, especially if you're families, right, I think what you should do is like, like with siblings all get together – and try to purchase a package together, whether it be a 10-game package or a 20-game package. doesn't have to be all 41 home games, but try to do it together because it's difficult to get individual game tickets this year. Oh, yeah. We're going to be you know, at the mercy of StubHub and SeatGeek and all of that stuff. Ticketmaster, they increase their prices based on demand. Yeah. 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 So the idea that the Spurs are going to load manage Wemby, out of their minds. Out of their minds. Okay, we have a big show today. Yeah. Again, don't forget, Locked On Spurs podcast. Subscribe. I subscribe on Spotify. You should, too. So what are we getting into today? We're going to talk about free agency rumors involving the San Antonio Spurs. Going to want to get CT's take on a potential starting lineup for our team. We're going to have some pop culture news as well. You know, Michael Jackson's been dead for 14 years, and he's still going to face a molestation trial. 14 years after his Man, death, he's dead. still being sued. <laughs> and uh, speaking of Jeff Garcia from Locked on Spurs, he posted a, a meme that I thought was funny. It asked the question, which fictional movie or TV character would you want to be married to? Cannot wait to hear Carolina Teague's answer to fictional, that story. A fictional a fictional, person. Yeah, fictional movie, fictional TV character. But let's go ahead and bring on Carolina Teague. CT, it is Tuesdays with Teague. There she is, all colorful, all fiestaed out, even though it's June. What's going on, CT? I'm Pride Month out. It's Pride Month. Dude, I love Pride Month, man. You know, uh, salute to all, all of the allies out there of the Pride community. Very, very nice. So, CT, we've done Tuesdays with Teague for a long time. Uh, now, we're, now we're back together. You know, reunited, and it feels so good. So here's the thing. Before we get going and talk spurs and talk about sports and pop culture and all that stuff. Do you want to defend yourself from the allegations of Joe Garcia that you are bougie at Starbucks? Look, I don't care. There's the mini <laughs> egg white sandwich. You know, you what got Joe it. Joe Garcia has to say, all I know is that Joe loves me. He knows my Starbucks order by heart. I'm not bougie at all. I just started a coffee obsession. There's a Starbucks right up the street. 
every time Joe just so happens to call me, I am at a Starbucks. And <laughs> going to get free stuff. I didn't think that he would call me out like that. But here we are. He's calling me out. And you know what, Joe? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you think, whether I'm bougie or not. You know I'm not bougie. I'm from Kirby. I'm the farthest thing from bougie you could possibly <laughs> be. Just because I drink oat milk and I'm trying to change my diet and not have to go to the restroom no, every no, five no, no. That, is, that ain't all she does. That does. Carolina, Carolina, it doesn't matter where you're from. We all have our bougie moments, okay? <laughs> we all have our bougie moments. And I'll share with you my bougie moment in a second. But it may not be the order because you go there, you have the egg whites, right? The egg white sandwich. Nothing wrong right, with that. The egg egg bites. They're the bites. I'm trying to eat low carb because I'm and a ring announcer. So I have to re eat low carb because I can't look like a sumo wrestler when I'm in the ring. I have, you know, the, you know, the tacos make me gain weight. It's true. Right. And I, you know, eat my egg white bites. I drink my coffee with oat milk and I'm fine for like a few hours. I'm back on the health kick. I'm on day two right now. <laughs> um, I'm on hour three of my health I'm, I'm, I'm on day two when it comes to it uh a low carb i'm not eating no carb i'm not doing that whole keto crap anymore because though it does work it's unsustainable but low carb and no carb are two different things so i'm doing the low carb thing uh hadn't had some egg whites uh oh my god the bougie thing i did this week was i started eating the uh low carb tortillas the flour tortillas from heb so i got that going and I'm not doing no carb, but I'm doing low carb, and I'm only doing myself one soda per day. And that is it, right? What, uh, soda? what soda is it? It's a uh, uh, a sugar-free one, whether it be Coke Zero or, or whatever the case may be. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, you go to Starbucks. Is it Maybe it's not the bougie order. Maybe it's the frequency by which you go to Starbucks. How often are you going to Starbucks? Probably like every day, every other day. Okay, that's what's bougie. It's, an, it's an addiction. No, no, that's, what, that's what's bougie. It, maybe it's not bougie. Maybe it's an addiction. That's she what goes it is. to Starbucks just about every day, and every time she can never get me anything. You know why she's in line. At this know? point, she should at least get a part-time job there so she can For get the real? discount, right? I make that joke about how much money I spend at Costco. That my wife or I should go over there work ten hours just for the employee discount. That's. I'm going to start some controversy. You know what? What's better than Starbucks? Dutch Brothers, man. Dutch Brothers is fire, man. Um, I've never I've, been. I've never been, but you know what? I've been wanting to try. I've been really wanting to try Mudslingers. Um, that's one of the ones I've been wanting to try. I need to go out of my way, show local support. Definitely go out there. So I'm gonna go to Mudslingers really soon. I got a gift card. Um, I haven't been to Dutch Brothers yet, but I feel like OJ, if I'm, if I'm the gonna school, yeah. OJ, right? That's the what old it school is. OJ for Mudslingers. Yeah. 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 If I switch from one coffee drink to the next then i want to go super local i'm going to go to mudslingers i'm going to skip dutch bros for sure there you go talking to carolina teague matthew Lerma saying ct is from kirby too whoa period now saying uh, let's see drusha how can you be bougie when you come from a town named after a vacuum cleaner <laughs> the kirby okay first of all i gotta speak on behalf of kirby when it comes to this not the city but the actual kirby appliance if you want to know something that's bougie about me I own one of those $3,500 vacuum cleaners. I financed that thing over the course of two years. I still use it six years later. My wife loves it. And by the way, I was a door-to-door -door Kirby salesman when I was in college. And I made decent commission doing it. So that's a little bit bougie. But I'm going to tell you what's bougie about me this week. I posted on Twitter last night that... I hired a handyman to come by my house. And in fact, after the show, he's going to come by. And it's funny because people are like, all right, money bags, you hired a handyman. And the fact of the matter is it's doing all the crap I don't want to do. And when I asked for an itemized statement as to how much it's going to cost for this that, and the other. So let me tell you what he's doing, right? He's coming over and he's painting the fence, which he already did, right? We put up a new fence a few months ago. It's been raining so much that it has to go three or four days in a row without rain before you can paint it. Finally, we've had a stretch without rain. We brought him in to paint it, right? And you, so you have to pay for the paint. You have to pay for the labor. And then on top of that, he's putting up lighting in my house. So he's taking down like the, the what came with the house, like the dining room lights. And he's putting up new lights up there because I'm going to turn one room into an office. Uh, the weather stripping of all the doors, he's doing that. He's painting some furniture. Uh, he's cleaning my ceiling because my ceiling is 26 feet up. So he's cleaning that, right? Just uh, dusting it and all that crap and wiping it all down. 
So he's doing miscellaneous stuff around the house. He's also replacing a blind, uh, a little bit of um, crown molding replacement and all that stuff. So I asked him how much it was going to cost, right? And an, an itemized thing about it. And uh, he goes, uh, $1,500, you know, 1500 And that includes the materials, right? So essentially the materials is about seven fifty. dollars The labor is about seven fifty. dollars He's going to work there for about a day and a half. And I was like, can you itemize that for me? And he goes, yeah, it's $1,000 for the fence and $500 for the other bullshit. And I thought it was funny because I was like, he was like offended by a statement request. <laughs> and I thought about it. I was like, why am I asking him for a statement request when I've already agreed to all this or for an itemized statement? But he's coming on in. But the question becomes, am I bougie for hiring a handyman? Because in theory, I could have done some of this stuff. In theory, I could have bought all this material. In theory, I could have taken a, a lesson or a YouTube tutorial to, to DIY. But as I told Joe the other day, I'm an indoor dog. It's 105 degrees outside. I'm an indoor dog. I don't want to be outside staining the fence or painting the fence at 105 degree weather. What? So does that make me bougie, Carolina Teague, that I hired a handyman to basically take care of all the little things around the house that I need done plus the fence? Compared to all the other men in our culture, yes, you are bougie because any other <laughs> Mexicano that is around our age or older would have definitely did it themselves and saved a whole lot of money and just purchased the products themselves, gotten the work done. Uh, so it is a little bougie when you look at it from that perspective. You should definitely be outside the volada, uh, going ahead and hammering fences together, everything. But if you look at it from a a convenience standpoint no you're not because it's hot outside you're a man of multiple jobs so i i get why you did it but if you're looking at it from a perspective of every other mexican man <laughs> in country, yeah you definitely are bougie okay middle finger by the way to chris gonzalez who reaches out to us on <laughs> on youtube i mean uh saying uh uh saying you pay people to hang your christmas lights jimenez <laughs> okay first of all <laughs> when my wife and i lived in a one story I would put up my own lights, right? I'd get up on the roof. I would do all that stuff, put the ladder up against the wall. Uh, but the top of my house in the front is about 30 feet up in the air, right? And it's a very tall house that I have. And on top of that, it's kind of slanted upwards where even like the driveway is further down. It's, like it's sloped upwards. I would potentially kill myself if I was up there putting lights up on my house, okay? I'm not doing that because I'm bougie. I'm not doing that because I'm lazy. I would much rather save the money. I think I pay a guy like 300 a year to put up the lights and take them down, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to literally kill myself or disable myself to put up twinkly lights, Okay. The fact that you're even talking about a house with 28 foot ceilings and two stories and all and Kirby vacuums at three thousand dollars <laughs> bougie to us. <laughs> that well, is great I mean, bougie. Like, like just embrace that you're a bougie Mexicano. And we already talked about this. You know, you and I had this conversation behind the scenes about bougie Mexicans. Anytime that Mexicans have been associated with being bougie. We're always cartel affiliated and That's we need right. to change that dynamic. So you're not affiliated with the cartel and you just so happen to be bougie. So, okay. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a financial advisor and I've been an advisor for 17 years. That is my other life. So before I get over here and, and then immediately after I go, I handle pe people's retirement plans. I handle their insurances, life insurance and stuff like that. That's how I make, a living right the radio the podcast this is all fun this is all fun times for me so that's kind of what i do uh but does that make me bougie um you know i look at it this way can i make more money doing my day job than to save a few bucks staining the fence or painting the fence and that's yeah. the thing well, we're not living in poverty mike let's be honest no no not at all yeah, but we're at not, look, at my, uh, look at freaking joe he got a whole studio in his house right now i'm not bougie though no i'm not bougie i mean driving driving a caddy driving a driving a caddy speaking of bougie since joe wants to call me out i'm bougie but you have a high quality studio and an extra spare bedroom that you happen to have I mean, so, the, like, the, the, the ring lights. Is it me or is it y'all? I, 
I'm ordering a $3 coffee every day. You have a high quality studio inside your house. Jimenez is hiring people to hang up his Christmas lights in his 28 story home or whatever he just said. Two story home. But I'm the bougie one. I'm the bougie one. Yes. And I got yes. a Cadillac, brand new Cadillac park. Oh, and you got a brand new Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> the bougie Mexican? Okay, so I'm looking at the uh, ring lights that we have up here, CT. The one above me, if you can see my arms, is this wide, right? So it's this wide by that wide. And there's two of them up here along with track lighting. This is a bougie studio that Joe has over here. Fortunately, he lives seven minutes from my house, right? My Alamo Ranch. Oh, uh, no. By I'm Alamo Ranch. I'll leave it by Alamo Ranch. No, neither no, neither, no, no, neither no. one of us live in Alamo Ranch. No. We live Alamo Ranch adjacent. Yeah. You know, if, if, if I was, I'm about three miles from where Alamo Ranch really is. Yeah. Okay. You're about three miles from where yep. Alamo Ranch really is. I'm in West Bear County. I am I am kind of near uh, I live off of Petranco and Tally. You live you're, you're on the nicer part of Marbach, is what it is. Petranco's just a nicer Marbach. Uh well you're still well, on Marbach. Yeah, you're still near okay. So CT, I gotta tell you this. In my neighborhood, in my neighborhood, they so my neighborhood has like uh four neighborhoods built inside and then some that are adjacent to the to the to the corner. And they're putting up seven hundred and fifty and eight hundred thousand dollar homes in my neighborhood, and those did not exist. When I bought my house, it's like they just decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put up million dollar homes right next to Jimenez's house. So it's just raising the values of my of my home uh, simply because, you know, they say guilt by association. I'm getting higher, higher uh, property taxes by association. But I don't mind. I live a good life. I live a good life. Does that mean I'm bougie? Well, I'm an indoor dog. Well, I don't know. Let's look. Drew is killing me with this comment, Mike. Look at Yeah, so he asked the question, are you going to have a handyman build you a dog cover <laughs> and leave it out so that the dogs don't get pummeled by rain? <laughs> First of all, I have a covered patio. It's not my fault that the rain was coming in sideways, and I have no neighbor behind me. Behind me is an elementary man, What school. if it was hailing that day, man? It was. You see? And you had the dogs outside. It was. There's and I was racing to them. There's nothing wrong with being bougie. Chris Gonzalez says, so I'm bougie because there's nothing wrong with being a bougie Mexican. We're trying to change the narrative. There you okay? go. We're drinking our coffees. We're in high quality studios now. We didn't get <laughs> a long way from picking vegetables with our grandparents back in the day. Hey, so Chris, gonna... Chris V1323 says, hello, CT, Joe, and Jimenez. What's up, Chris? What's up, Chris? Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Again, we're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. We are live on Twitter as well. Let's uh, send some love to our sponsors, Cynthia J. Sanchez from J. Par Realty. Uh, we're going to flash her number on the screen right now, 210-273-0748. Again, 210-273-0748. What she's doing right now, she says, if you give her a call, shoot her a text, she will do a free market analysis for you when it comes to your home. So you might be wanting to sell your home. You might want to buy a home. She will give a free market analysis telling you exactly how much houses are going for in your neighborhood. Not how much they're put up for, but how much they sold for and therefore your true value of your home. Not what Zillow says or Realtor.com says. The true value of your home. On top of that, she has some home builders right now who are selling homes at interest rates of 4 or 5%. You go to a bank right now, it's like 7 8% to get a home right now. And a lot of people are like, you know what? I can't buy a home. It's too expensive. Interest rates are too high. That is true. But did you know new builds? A lot of them are being financed internally. And Cynthia J. Sanchez can tell you which home builders are doing it, which neighborhoods are doing it. So you don't have to worry about interest rates. It's a very good thing to look at. Cynthia J. Sanchez, J. Parr Real Estate, 210 273-0748. She's been a realtor for 16 years. She was also uh, someone who would do damage assessments for homeowners insurance, right? So she knows what she's looking for if you're buying a pre-owned home. She works well with the military, uh, the faith-based community. She's a very, very good realtor. She is my personal realtor, Cynthia J. Sanchez, 210-273-0748. She was the one who found me my bougie home when I bought it six years ago, you know, it's not like it's 3000 square feet or anything like that. Cause it's only 2,998. It's just two feet off, two feet off bougie. Okay. Let's talk Spurs CT. Then we're going to get in some pop culture. Uh, Yahoo sports uh, had a, an article that was posted this morning uh, written by Jay Fisher. Who's reporting that the Spurs have interest in trading for, or may have interest 
Okay, we never know, right? It's the Spurs. It's a vault, right? They're not going to say things. But the idea is that the Spurs might have interest trading for New Orleans Pelican center Jonas Valanciunas. And says that the Spurs at one point were interested in Nas Reed, but uh, Reed agreed to a three-year deal with the Timberwolves to stay with the T-Wolves. Valanciunas is 31 years old. He's a 6'11 center, was the fifth overall pick back in 2011. We, we know him because he played for the Raptors, the Grizzlies, most recently the Pelicans. Has one year left on his deal, $15.4 million, And he has averaged a double-double each of the last five seasons. 14 points, 10 rebounds, average last year. One last thing, CT. The dude is a career 36% shooter from three. Mm -hmm. Do you buy the notion that the Spurs are looking at another stretch center to go along with Zach Collins? I, I definitely, that's something that they definitely need. So it doesn't surprise me that that news is out there. And then when you watch the games against the Pelicans last year, Jonas Valanciunas was bullying the Spurs. And I don't, yeah. I don't mean that to be offensive, but he was. And he's an incredible center. And it doesn't surprise me that they're looking at him as an option. He would fit right into the system if they were to look into him. And I think that it makes sense that that's somebody that they're going after, if they are. You know, Joe put it, correctly when i was telling him about this uh, right before the show but you described him as saying valanciunas has that dog in him mm -hmm. he does have that dog in him and if you pair him alongside zach collins what does that do for wemby you have two enforcers mm -hmm. and okay i'm gonna round up valanciunas from 6 11 to seven feet okay yeah. he's, he's another seven foot type of player i like the idea of the spurs getting bigger yeah right because yeah. I, there, there has there's there was this this trend from being big men to you know what we're going to do is we're going to spread the floor and be have a bunch of gnats out there who are smaller combo guard type of players and play small ball but if you notice some of the the, the teams that have been winning titles the nuggets this year big boys out there man there's big guys right uh whether it be aaron gordon or nikola Jokic, these are big big dudes out there and then you take a look at other teams that have won the finals most recently when it comes to like uh the uh, milwaukee bucks big guys out there and i like the return to that i like the return to size because you can't teach height mm -hmm. and i want some players out there and i know zach collins has that dog in him too i want some players out there because we know that victor Wembanyama is going to have a target on his back and people are going to want to make statements against him they're going to want to clown him they're going to want to do all that and we need somebody one two or three players out there out there who are going to kick someone's ass if they go after Wemby. That's going to step up and not like, you know, do the puff the chest out. No, throw a haymaker, red card his ass, do something to protect our guy. Yeah, and I want to see him I put want. hands on that dude. Yeah, we, we, already know, we already know who the ass beaters are on the team. It's Zach Collins and it's Jeremy Sohan. They're there willing you know. to whoop your ass. It doesn't matter where they're at on the floor. If they really get into it, they will go to war for Wemby. And a little birdie told me also that Keldon Johnson also has hands, although we haven't seen that on the court. And I don't. Well, know. I mean, Keldon, Keldon boxes, right? I mean, he does. Exactly. Uh, he does boxing. boxing. He likes watching MMA, but, MMA too. But boxing on the side, doing co combat sports on the side, is totally different than on the court. On the court, he doesn't tend to get into these fights. But if worst case scenario, I asked Keldon last year publicly like would you go to war for your team he said yeah i'm willing to go to war for my team so keldon is down okay but people who are down without you even having to say anything is zach collins and jeremy sohan and you're right they are people are going to try to make a statement out of victor win Banyama. so having somebody like jonas valanciunas there zach collins there jeremy sohan to protect our new asset mm -hmm. is going to be perfect i like the way that you described it like great idea I like the way that you describe it, our new asset, because that is exactly what he is. A lot of people reaching out to us on YouTube wanting to have uh, some points made about this. Uh, we have one saying Valanciunas and Bassey with Wemby playing the three. The other team better be good at threes. That's uh, what Matthew Lerma reached out to us to say. Uh, Joker says uh, Jeremy has a bit of Dennis Rodman in him. Uh, beyond the hair. And, you know, you and I, uh, CT, would, would go after each other when it came to Jeremy Sohan. I and like Dennis so Rodman because you don't know what you're talking about when it comes okay. to Okay. Dennis Rodman, slightly overrated. Slightly. Okay. Not a top 75. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, 
it, but continue- not a top 75 player of all time. Okay, let me put it to you that way. He was a good player, but he's not a top 75 player of all time. He played for a big market team. If he played for the Denver Nuggets, he never would have been considered a top 75 player. Ah! Just, just facts. If you play You're so Super crazy League. right now. Dude, Tony you Parker. the reason why the Bad Boy Pistons actually won titles. I know they had the Isaiah Thomas. Bad Boy Pistons won they because of Isaiah them. Thomas, Bill Lambier, uh, Vinny Johnson, and all of those guys. It, it, was, when, it was beyond Rodman. Even when Jordan came back his first year after retiring from baseball, they did not win a championship because they didn't have Dennis Rodman on the team. Once Dennis Rodman got on that team, they started winning championships. Well, are, they also didn't. They also didn't have Michael Jordan on that team, but uh, that's the reason why the Bulls didn't win those two seasons at the Rockets. No, it's, it's a team thing. At the end, of, anyway, we can have that conversation another day. Okay, okay. Well, really about to make me mad. Okay, so what were you saying about Jeremy? Oh, well, I was saying Sohan's the biggest benefactor of Wemby being there. Like, yeah. I, I, I was not sold on Jeremy Sohan being the second coming of Kawhi Leonard or being somebody who was going to go out there and be a star player where he's like the number one player on the team i was sold on him being a a a solid like a very good number three player on the team or a potential number two the scotty if you will on a to someone's jordan or the rodman to someone's jordan and pippen and the great thing is is that now he has that dude jeremy sohan is going to excel so much simply because the talent around him is getting better he doesn't have to be the alpha or the number one player on the court and because of that he's going to excel now i have i am now buying jeremy sohan stock more than i had before simply because the 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 system changes and what is expected of him changes hey bones tube has a good question though he goes who would the spurs trade for jonas valanciunas though i'll let you ask to answer that question first i mean if you had to pull a trade for jonas valanciunas for one season because again he's a unrestricted free agent at the end of this upcoming season who would you offer you know, so so if you're looking at a $15 million salary right there, maybe I'll answer that one first. Uh, you could probably do a straight up salary wise for a Doug McDermott. Uh, the the salaries are, are are close enough. I would not give up any of the first round draft picks for a one year rental on Valanciunas. So I wouldn't give up the Atlanta pick in 2025 yeah. or the Charlotte pick or the uh, the they have what two they have Charlotte and Toronto's this year. Toronto's is top six protected. Charlotte's is top 14 protected. They have unprotected uh, in 2025 of Chicago's and Atlanta's. I wouldn't give up any of those. Uh, I think McDermott would probably be the one. That's what I was going to say, That's too. Doug McDermott. Too. Yeah, definitely McDermott. Number even twice. It, would, it would match. And what sucks about it is, is that if, if, the, if the Spurs are good, if the Spurs are going to be a good team this year, when I say a good team, I'm saying 500 or better. If they're going to do that, you do need a Doug McDermott out there because he's the most efficient offensive player out there when it comes to effective field goal shooting. And that is a big deal. The most effective was Devin Vassell and uh, and uh, uh, Doug McDermott. The, the two least efficient were Jeremy Sohan and Trey Jones. But you can flip the script a little bit. You know, so I would hate to see McDermott leave, but if you are going to make that play, that is the guy that would need to go simply because of the salaries or Devontae Graham, but they got rid of Devontae Graham. So why would they want him back? So Doug McDermott would have to be the most likely one there unless you're going to give up some draft capital. Uh, We have people reaching out to us and saying, uh, Matthew saying four second rounders. Well, uh, you know what? Let's talk about that because we saw earlier this week that uh, there was a trade where who was traded uh, uh, for Rudy Gay? It was um, uh, Rudy oh, Gay, and who was it? Um, oh my God, I cannot believe it. It was a big name. John Collins from, from, from Gay, Atlanta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So people were like, "Why did they trade for Rudy Gay? Rudy Gay is 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 so past his prime. It was a salary dump." I wouldn't right. be surprised if they went ahead and just waved Rudy Gay all outright. You know, right? Yeah. So in theory, in theory, the Spurs have the cap space to assume this so typically whenever you do a trade it needs to be relatively close i don't know the percentage i don't know if it's 75 or 85 percent of what's coming in so if you trade for somebody yeah. who has you know if you're trading a 20 million dollar contract you need to send out 15 to 17 million to kind of make it match uh but if you have the cap space you can just simply absorb it so it is possible that if new orleans just wants to get rid of him 
and use that cap space to sign somebody else, what's to say that the Spurs have to give up anybody? Exactly. It could be a salary dump on their end, too. But the Spurs have the draft capital to give up maybe four second rounders or whatever they have. So it's possible to maybe trade somebody like Doug McDermott. um, And I think that would be the best ideal situation because it's not like Doug McDermott was a scrub last season either. He was valuable, especially offensively at the three point line, too. He's a good shooter. So Mm -hmm. that would be an asset to have. And it also allowed the Pelicans to get cap space on their end as well. And the Spurs need somebody like a Jonas Valanciunas to help take those punches for Wemby because people are going to be coming after him. Exactly. Exactly. Talking to Carolina Teague, CT, a league of her own podcast. Subscribe to her podcast on YouTube. I subscribe. I watch it as well because, you know, uh, every once in a while she'll say a nice thing about me. I don't, I I love it. We're going to show, uh, how you can follow her as well and, and how her stream works as well. Uh, but we're talking to Carolina Teague. It is Tuesdays with Teague. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question, CT, about let's pretend that Brian Wright named you as the head coach for the first game of the season. You have to trot out a starting five. And let's go ahead and assume that Trey Jones is back on the team. Okay, let's make that. He, Trey Jones is a restricted free agent. Maybe they bring him back. Maybe they don't. But let's say that he does come back. You are the head coach of the Spurs. Who is your starting five? So at the one, I'm going to have Trey Jones if he comes back because he's smaller and he's shown that he's been better at his ball handling last season. And I love the fact that he's quicker. But I, I kind of teeter-totter between that or Sohan. So I can't make a definitive answer on that. It wouldn't surprise me if they switch Jeremy Sohan's role to be more of a one. So I would put... If I had to make a decision, I'm putting Sohan at the one because he's just a bigger star. And I think he's growing and it just seems like they're going in that direction. At the two, I definitely have Devin Vassell. At the three, I would have Keldon Johnson. At the four, this is where everybody kind of goes back and forth on. That's where I would put Wemby. I put him as a power forward. And the reason why I wouldn't necessarily put him as center is because he's thinner. He's smaller. Unless he bulks up, there's people in the NBA like I would say like a Joel Embiid or like a Jonas Valanciunas who hasn't necessarily come come over yet, or somebody like Nikola Jokic, who's big. They're going to bully him in that in the paint at the five. So I would rather put him in the four where he's more valuable in that role. And then at the five, that's where I would put somebody like Zach Collins, like who, like we said earlier, who's willing to take those punches, who's willing to fight, who's willing to take all that heat at the center position, or if they get Jonas Valanciunas, even better at the five. So Zach Collins or Jonas at the five. That would be my starting five. I like it. I like it. Uh, mine would be, if Trey Jones came back, I know there's a lot of people who just don't believe in the true point guard type of thing. But I am old school when it comes to it. I want to see a true point guard out there. So let's go ahead and assume that Trey Jones is back. I would want Trey Jones to start at point. I would want Devin Vassell to be the two. Mm-hmm. I would want Wemby to be the three. Mm. and I would want Sohan to play the four and Zach Collins to play the five, and I would want Keldon Johnson. Even though he led the team in points last year, I'd want him to be the sixth man. One of them's got to be the sixth man. But, but isn't that a little bit – why would you have him as sixth man if he's the highest paid spur? That's the only question I have. You know, um, I, I think that the Spurs have a history because of Manu Ginobili to – basically be okay with the six man being a high income earner. I mean, it wasn't like Manu was being paid trash when he was here. Uh, Manu was one of the higher paid players on the team. Um, I just think that it's because of the team. Now, if you're going to say, well, Trey Jones doesn't come back, we're not going to have a true point guard. We're going to have uh, Vassell and Keldon be the backcourt. I'd be okay with that too. But I do like the idea of having a floor general out there in Trey Jones. I like the idea of Devin Vassell being wide open, shooting the three. And, and somebody's need to come off the bench to keep it rocking and rolling, right? To provide a not only the scoring, but a spark. And if they can get into the ear of a Keldon Johnson and say, look, Keldon, we need you to come off the bench. You're still going to get 30 minutes a game. You're still going to get a lot of minutes out there. But we need you to, to be the leader of the second unit which also includes Doug McDermott, which includes Bassey, which includes Malachi Branham, which includes Blake Wesley. Suddenly, the Spurs have a deeper team than what we're expecting. because All because Wemby's there. 
all because Wimby's there. And if they bring in a Valanciunas, even better. But there needs to be a spark off the bench to keep it going. We saw that with the Denver Nuggets this year. The Denver Nuggets never let off. Notice how, like, when Joker would get off the off the court, they still have some players to bring out there to to kind of get things going, score points, and 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 put points on the board. I wouldn't mind seeing Keldon Johnson off the bench, but I still want him to play thirty minutes. What are your thoughts? I, it would be it would be hard for me to see that because he's the highest paid person on the team. He's not one of the highest paid like Manu was. He is the highest paid right now, and then. On top of that, you have the issue where, like somebody just pointed out, Clutch is going to get him traded real quick. But even removing Clutch from the situation, for me, when I look at the six-man role, you're right. It is a really valuable role, especially to the Spurs, because the valuable six-man last year before he left the team was Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker came out during as six-man, and that's where he thrived. But it was because Lonnie Walker was extremely inconsistent as a starter. And you can argue that Keldon is inconsistent or not inconsistent, especially when it comes from shooting at the three. But because of his income, because he did have flashes of where he was good at the three at some point, and because there's a possibility that, you know, this team is going in a different direction because of Wemby, I don't really see him coming off the bench and being that person. I, I don't. I don't see him as a six man. I see somebody more like a Sohan or a Trey Jones as a six man. Now, who would provide that spark coming off the bench? For me, it sounds like it would be more Trey Jones. Just watching him last year, seeing how he would come off off the bench at, at sometimes before he became a starter due to injuries, he was that spark that they needed. Every time he'd come out on the court, he was quick. He knew how to move the ball. He facilitated re really well, good at passing. That's somebody who I think can provide a spark on the bench should he remain with the Spurs. So, now, I'm, so I'm that's, taking a look. that's where I'm at. I'm taking a look at Keldon Johnson's salary. So this year he's making $20 million. And then after that, he's going to be making 18 and 17 and so on and so forth. And when I look at Keldon Johnson, I think to myself, he's not as highly paid as what people would think. He's the highest paid spur at the moment. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that there were 67 other players in the NBA last year who made more than him. So it's not like he's a top 20, you know, highest earning paid player in the NBA. He's kind of just he makes what a decent starter makes. And then on top of that, future years, he's going to get down to 18, 17, and 16 million. So I, I, I really don't think that it's that. I, I, I would hope that he would have it in him to be like, okay, I'll be a team player. Now, do I expect that to happen? No. But then what happens to Trey Jones? That, that's my issue. So, what do you mean? Like, like, would he be like, what do you mean? What would happen to Trey Jones? Like, you don't see him coming off of the bench at all? Oh, well, you're starting five. You don't have Trey Jones on the starting five. Or you no, did. I, you have I, I have Trey Jones as, as, as a starting as point guard. Okay. So what would happen if if you don't see them switching roles at any point? If, if Trey Jones doesn't come back, then I would not want to have a point guard out there at all because the Spurs wouldn't have anybody on the court to be a four general. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that, that is a luxury for the Spurs right now is that Sohan can bring the ball up and he's comfortable with handles. Um, Wemby's comfortable with handles as well. Uh, obviously, Vassell can bring the ball up, and Kel and Keldon can too. So it's not like the Spurs wouldn't have the ability to bring the ball up the court. Um, but my think about wanting to have a true point guard is at the end of games, there needs to be somebody that they that is going to have to break through the double team, somebody that's going to break through, you know, that type of defensive pressure. And that is where the value of having a true point guard comes into play. We saw that when the Spurs had Tony Parker for many, many years. There's something to be, there's a value in that. In a close game, just get it to the point guard. They're going to get fouled. They're going to get the ball up the court. And I don't necessarily trust Sohan in that position. I don't trust Keldon Johnson in that position. I don't trust Wemby in that position. I think that having that true ball handler is something that, even though it's not in vogue in the NBA anymore, I think there's some value to it, and that's why I want Trey Jones back. I want Trey Jones back too. I think he's been he's shown and proven that he's he's. In, I just feel like he's improved drastically from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Just seeing him embracing that starting role 
was for me enough for me to say, okay, I would love for him to come back because he's incredible at what he does. So that's the person that I would love to have come back. But I, for me, it w- it's hard for me to see Keldon as the sixth man. And if that does happen, then it happens, right? Because it's pop, and pop we trust at the end of the day, whatever his decisions are, I'm going to roll with it because he's more so of a team person. So if that's where Keldon is going to thrive, then put him there. But for me, I don't see him uh, coming off the bench just personally. Talking to Carolina Teague. Again, we're doing Tuesdays with Teague today. Hopefully this becomes a more normal thing because I, I enjoy having you on and your uh, your opinions when it comes comes to the Spurs. By the way, if you want to know more about the Spurs, don't forget to follow Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs. He's on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone, uh, taking a look at all the different stories that he has going on, uh, talking about how the Spurs were nominated for ESPN Sports Humanitarian Team. He just posted this article right now uh, on Ken's5.com as well. Uh, Jeff Garcia, again, has his daily podcast about the Spurs. Uh, I'm actually going to be on tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to try to figure out exactly what the angle is going to be, but it's daily content when it comes to the Spurs. Again, Jeff Garcia, Jeff G Spurs Zone on Twitter. I follow on Spotify. I listen daily, and you should too. Now, <laughs> let's turn to some pop culture. Uh, just a heads up. Yes. Carolina's got a couple more minutes, like maybe three, four more minutes. No, I got, like, I got nine minutes. I got nine minutes. Nine minutes. I'll be okay. out, okay. I'll nine minutes. out at 102. But I okay. wish I could stay with y'all all through the show. I love y'all so much. No problem. Okay, real fast. Michael Jackson's been dead for 14 years, but there's still going to be a new molestation trial. A California Court of Appeals ruled this week that a man named Wade Robson can go forward with a trial where he's going to accuse the king of pop of molestation when Robson was between the ages of 7 and 14. TMZ says that Robson is suing MJJ Productions. The company says they have no legal duty to protect and thinks that this is a, a you know, like why now type of, uh, of, of lawsuit. Uh, weird thing is in 2005 when Michael Jackson was accused of molestation in another trial, Robson actually testified on Michael Jackson's behalf saying that nothing ever happened, but he changed his story later on as an adult. What are your thoughts on Michael Jackson being sued 14 years after his death? I mean, I mean, it's weird because if you're, if you're, if you, if you from are not bougie, kind of like how we grew up and we passed away, it would be hard for somebody to sue our estate because we have no money to take. In Wade Robson's situation, who, by the way, if you guys don't know what he, who he is, I saw the whole documentary. He was basically groomed by Michael Jackson, um, slept with him in his bed for so many years, um, denied the allegations when uh, Jackson was first accused because Jackson was his friend and he asked him to do that. And he was young. He was a hot choreographer. He choreographed, he choreographed for NSYNC, Justin Timberlake, and Britney Spears. And he he was the person that Britney cheated on Justin Timberlake with, by the way. So when I see him suing now and coming out with what is allegedly his truth um, and suing his estate, maybe he has a lot of trauma from what happened to him. And people who are victims of sexual assault, they really don't come out with their truth and they suppress it for many, many years, which is what he said. He suppressed everything that happened to him. And uh, now he has the right to sue the estate. Now, whether he'll win or not, that's another story. If he has the evidence to back it up, then yes, you know, move forward and win that case. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. But what I'm saying is sexual assault is nothing to joke around with. And it, it, and my whole thing is, if you're a grown man, don't have little boys that aren't your children sleeping with you because then these accusations can occur. That's where I'm at with that. Now, I mean, I'm glad that you brought up Wade Robson's uh, success Mm -hmm. because this is not somebody who is kind of like a a poor broke guy Mm -hmm. who who is, um, you know, looking for money or anything like that. This is a guy that's an Emmy award winner for crying out loud. Like you mentioned, he's a choreographer. He's 40 years old. Uh, He's, he's worked for, for shows like, so you think you can dance and things like that. He is part of Hollywood. Uh, I think the question is, is that, you know, a lot of the trauma comes out later on. And I'm not saying that Michael Jackson was guilty in this particular case, but the fact of the matter is, is that where there's smoke, there's fire and he should have known better. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I have been, I have, I have never liked Michael Jackson's music, even growing up. And even today, today, if I hear Michael Jackson on the air, I think to myself, I don't want to listen to this. Not only cause I don't like the music because I just, I just feel dirty listening to it. It's almost like listening to R Kelly, you know, a little, little, little bit dirty. 
Okay, hey, one, man, R. Kelly's got some bangers though. Dude, he really I'm, does. <laughs> it's not that you can't listen to his music anymore because of that. But like, like for example, I have I have a little boy, right? And me and Mike, we've been friends for a long time. Me and Joe. But if y'all called me up and said, "Hey, you can um your son spend the night in our bedroom." I'd be like, hell no, nah. y'all are crazy. Oh, I know. Yeah. Where were the parents at? That's all I want to know. Where were the parents at? Dude, I mean, all of these king of whatever have all been creepers, man. Elvis Presley was a creeper, you know, with a uh, having a 14-year-old girl spend the night, you know. Ended up marrying her, but still, I mean, Jerry Lee Lewis as well. I mean, they're, they're all groomers when it comes to it. I mean, Mariah Carey was groomed by Tommy Mottola, for crying out loud. Uh, it happens in, in reverse, where you have the management go in and groom the actual celebrity look at celine dion and her 95 year old husband or however old he is i mean he's not 95 but may as well be. <laughs> yeah no that that poor guy man he, he passed away years ago oh he did yeah he did um uh, before ct we let you go uh jeff garcia from lockdown spurs and ken's five uh posted a meme asking the question which fictional tv which fictional tv character or fictional movie character would you want to be married to who would that be? Mm. Uh, Eric from The Little Mermaid. That's who I'd be married to. <laughs> Interesting. Are you, are you talking about like real, the, the live action movie that came out just a couple of months ago? Or are you talking about the cartoon the character? The one when I was a kid. Yeah. Because, you know, Ariel. I mean, we're doing cartoons. We're doing yes. cartoons. So it's I can do the Ducati cool. from the new Transformers movie. Come on, give me a it's person. Fictional. It's a fictional. It's a fictional movie. I'm, I love cartoon movies. That's and, what. I'm and then Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Come on, give me an actual person. Eric is an actual person. Let me just say, I'm just gonna encapsulate by saying this: The Little Mermaid lost her voice. Okay, and as somebody who is in sports media, and I have lost my voice, you know, you know, respectively, multiple times in this industry. When you can find a man who helps you find your voice again, when you find a man who wants to save you and rescue you and make sure you live the best life and have a lot of money and treats you really well and he goes against all your haters like Ursula, then that's somebody that I want to be with. So, okay, so give me a TV one. Give me a TV reference okay, real fast. Fine. Uh, God, I don't even watch TV, but um, probably um, the dude from Ancient Aliens, the main guy with the with the crazy hair. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> you are all about conspiracy theories. All yep, about conspiracy I would marry him because hey, that's smart as hell. Not lying, man. CT loves her some conspiracy theories. I'm telling you. If you got a good conspiracy theory, I'm all ears. I would marry the guy from Ancient Aliens because he's extremely intelligent. He knows all the tea on alien stories. He she does gave, his research. She gave, and home. she gave a cartoon. And she gave a documentary guy from the History Channel. From the History Channel. Yeah. She's awful at this game. Awful oh, at this game. That is Carolina. No, because you guys are so, everybody's so shallow. They go after looks. I'm not going after looks. I'm going after how you treat me and how our life would be together. I would be a happy girl if I married the guy from Ancient Aliens. I would be a very happy girl if you I married Eric the, the little guy lady. from Ancient Aliens. I don't think he's ready to be married to no Latina. <laughs> I told him, I'm married to a Latina. So if you know, you know. They're very yeah. passionate people. Okay, man. Rudolph Gonzalez reaches out and says, Jessica Rabbit. Dude, not a cartoon. A person. Right. No, you cannot bully us and make us pick non-cartoon characters. They're fictional. The, the meme, what was it, the question again? What TV uh, character or movie character would you want to be married to? I don't know, man. Loki, the, the mom from Dexter's Laboratory. Dude, come on. Dude. You guys suck <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, Rudolph, for saying that it's going to be Jessica Rabbit, I am going to say that you just answered Christina Hendricks from her Mad Men days. Hey, hey, hey. That is pretty close. Yeah, boy. That is pretty close. Now, I know you have to leave, uh, CT, so I want to thank you for being on. Uh, she will listen to Michael Jackson music whenever she likes because she won't hold it against him. Uh, I know she's going to turn on. Uh, R. Kelly's 12 play when she uh, gets no, off the stream. She's right going to listen to Ignition in the car. I know Ignition. she is. Oh, my goodness. Hot and fresh <laughs> out the kitchen. That is Carolina <laughs> Teague. Hey, real fast. Yeah, but the one I can't give up is I Believe I Can Fly from oh, the Space Jam soundtrack. Oh, my God. That's, that's really hard for me to give up. Yeah. That's really hard for me to give up, you guys. That's a jam right there. I'll, I'll throw Michael Jackson. Fired. I'll throw Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror in that mix. Like, <laughs> we're, allowed, we're allowed to take one song with us. <laughs> Before you let us, we let you go. Tell us how we can 
follow you, what you're up to, how you how we can subscribe to you. Let us know. Okay, so it's Pride Month. Uh, at the end of this, my birthday is coming up in two days. So make sure you guys tell me happy birthday. It's cancer season. So make Put sure you guys the happy Put up birthday the up. on the 29th. June is the best month, period. Um, then we have uh, Sabotage Wrestling coming up. I'm going to be ring announcing this. Sat I'm not. I'm going to be working on my birthday. Sad day. Uh, so wrestling. Show actually, it's not work when you're having fun. So I do have two wrestling shows. Sabotage Wrestling this Saturday. If you guys can come out. It's on the south side of San Antonio. They have tacos, limonada. All that good stuff is there. Barbecue. It's a good time. If you're on the south side, come out and support us. And uh, this Sunday is River City Wrestling for me. I have the League of Our Own podcast tomorrow. And uh, me and Guyland, we're going to be having a great time. We love you guys so much here at the MJ to Acquire Taste Studios. You know, me and Guyland extend our love and support to you guys. I'm very proud of you, Jimenez, for having your weekly podcast every single day. It's a lot of dedication and work. So from me and Guyland, we love both of you guys, you and Joe. So thank you so much for inviting us on. League of Our Own is this tomorrow 7 45 or 7 o'clock p.m we're gonna be on twitter we're on youtube now because you guys inspired me i'm on youtube too and nice. i'm also on facebook live and um i oh i'm gonna go eat tacos with michelle beetle so stay tuned for that um and i have a lot coming up so you guys will see i'm really excited follow me at carolina teak underscore my tiktok i hit my first viral tiktok so follow me at Carolina Teak Sports. A million views on one of my TikToks. Four really? million views. Yep. Four million views on it, one, my Instagram reel. So got big things coming. So I'm really excited and blessed to cover the Spurs for another season with Sports Tonight. You guys can catch me there too. All this stuff. I'm all over the goddamn place. So I love you guys so much. Thank you guys. You are. That is Thank right. you for having me on. That is my Sports Talk sister, Carolina Teague. Bye, CT. Follow her. Subscribe to her. Cheer for her, root for her. She does a fantastic job. Carolina, thanks for being on. Hopefully we'll do this more often on Tuesdays. Tuesdays with Teague. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish things up by talking about that whole thing involving your favorites. You know, if you could marry any TV or movie character, which one it would be? Everyone here sucks at that game. Okay. No, man, I'll give you a real one, though. Give it to me. Uh, what was her name? Oh, I forgot the name of the actress, but that series, Dark Angel. Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba, bro. Woo. Oh, there you go. Yeah, she was a dark hottie back then. Yeah. Jessica Alba. Now a now a billionaire, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, dude. Because all the cosmetics that she does. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about this and I probably thought way too much into it, right? If it was a movie character, it would be Salma Hayek's character from Fool's Rush In. Okay, because of that whole <laughs> okay. scene where she's dancing and cooking inside the uh the kitchen and the cuisina. You know, bringing the family over, having all the brothers and, and all that stuff. My only problem would be she hangs out with the ex-boyfriend. That That's not a, a good yeah. thing. Chewy needs to be out of the picture. Don't hang out with the family. Dude, that might be a red flag. That might be a red flag. Maybe it's not her. Now, I will say this. When it comes to TV, you know, maybe it's my age. Because back in the day, you know, 17-year-old Jimenez would have been like, you know, Kelly Kapowski, 21 year old would have been that same girl, but when she was on Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah, yeah. But I'm in my 40s now. So when I watch TV, I try to be as age appropriate as possible, right? I just got finished watching Modern Family. Oh, man. And everyone's going to think Sofia Vergara. Don't get me wrong, Sofia Vergara is smoking hot, but it's the one who played Claire Dunphy played by julie bowen the, really the, the blonde mom who's who's the the one of the moms on the show yeah you know pritchard's daughter uh the reason is is because i see interviews with her and she seems like a cool person and then also because in real life i act like her husband on the show so much my wife when we watch the shows we, we that's kind of our our night night stuff we go to bed watching modern family now and she looks at me and she goes Phil Dunphy, you are Phil Dunphy. <laughs> and I look at her and I'm like, dude, you are Claire Dunphy. Like, there's so many similarities between that. And I think that's why that show was so popular for so long. I jumped on the wagon three months ago. Now I now I can't stop watching it, but that's it. Jacob reaches out and says, Kelly Bundy would be it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume that, Jacob, that you might be closer to my age. Are we talking about the you at 20 or the you at 40? Uh, because Kelly Bundy fantastic again my favorite kelly bunny moment 
the tie to Modern Family is Ed O'Neill. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. The father. The father. Uh, Kelly Bundy did this one episode of of uh, Married with Children where she's modeling for a car. <laughs> and it's the new Alante that she jumps yeah. up and down. <laughs> My wife, every once in a while, when we see uh, there's a there's a car out there called Alante. It's, it's Elantra, the Elantra, Elantra, yeah, Elantra. Yeah. There you go. Whenever my wife sees it, she says it, and it's just so <laughs> freaking funny. Um, Chris Gonzalez reaches out and says, "Did you see her in Happy Gilmore, Julie Bowen?" Well, I've seen uh, that movie before. Uh, see, Happy Gilmore, Julie Bowen. I'm, I'm looking it up right now for you, Chris. Looking it up right now. Oh yeah, I remember her in that show, in that movie. Um, she wasn't as attractive. She actually got more attractive as she got older. And that's the thing about it. Now, if you were to say, who's your runner up? I mentioned Christina Hendricks from Mad Men. I'm a big fan of that show. Uh, oh, by the way, I mentioned to my wife yesterday, last night, that John Hamm got married. And John Hamm, who's the main character from, uh, the, the main actor from uh, Mad Men, I mentioned to my wife that he got married over the weekend. She was kind of sad for about 30 minutes. No. Her celebrity crush got married in real life. But Christina Hendricks... Good Lord. She was also in The Good Girls, which is a pretty funny show that's on Netflix. It just wrapped up. They, it got canceled. Uh, but it was on for a few seasons. Pretty good show. I would recommend it. Uh, Jacob is clarifying that when he says Kelly Bundy, he's talking about 16 or 17. By the way, nothing wrong with Peggy Bundy. You know, she had that sex drive that guys would want. I mean, what was wrong with Al Bundy? Al Bundy didn't want Peggy. You kidding me? Peggy wanted it all day, every day. I think he was just tired because he had to work so much. He just wanted to hang he out with his boys. He was selling shoes. Exactly. He just wanted to hang out with his boys and drink some beers. <laughs> well, this has been a fun show. Thank you so much for everyone who watched. And by the way, before you get off and stop watching this program, like and subscribe. Hit the like button. Like button. That's good for us. That is very good for us. Again, thank you again to our sponsor, Cynthia J. Sanchez, who is with J. Par Realty. Again, uh, she's offering a free home evaluation as far as a market valuation of your home so that you can know if you want to sell it. Again, she also has home builders offering homes at 4 or 5% interest rate, which is a big deal these days. A lot of them are also covering closing costs. Reach out to Cynthia J. Sanchez at J. Par Real Estate, 210 273 zero seven four eight and again don't forget to subscribe to locked on spurs podcast i do so on spotify they are a friend of the show jeff garcia is a good good friend of mine i'm bougie apparently so is jeff garcia but we're good friends subscribe to locked on spurs we're going to be back tomorrow if you have any recommendations as to topics that you want me to discuss or want to get into reach out to me i'm on twitter at mj acquired taste and also follow me on tiktok at mike acquired taste uh if we get up to a thousand people we can go live on tiktok this is a growing thing sponsor 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 if you are a business owner reach out to us dm me i'll give you some contact information as to how this all works okay for joe garcia my name is mike jimenez this is the acquired taste see you guys tomorrow mm -hmm.